Good morning and welcome to Television Nigerian. It's time for the breakfast show, Daybreak Nigeria. My name is Anthony Momoni. Welcome to today's edition that promises to be very revealing and educating. I'm not alone. I've got Cynthia right here by my side. Mm, good morning. Stop calling my name. <laughs> Don't call my name for me. Hi, my name is Cynthia. Well, of course, it's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, the second day in the month of May is my side. And of course, it's Daybreak Nigeria right here on Television Nigeria. And of course, today we have a whole lot of interesting things lined up for you, from our concerns to our foreign stories to the topic of the day and to all the different facts file and every single thing that you just have to know. So sit back and relax as the show continues. All right, our concerns uh, stems uh, from uh, the federal government's uh, decision to ban the importation of codeine into the country, talking about the drug syrup that is usually used for cough medicine, but being abused by mostly youths from the northern region of the country and also recently the, the bomb blast that occurred in Adamawa State, uh, a lot of lives were lost, some say 68, but a very sad story that I was still experiencing uh, these very large casualties. And also we'll be looking at very interesting topics too, we'll be focusing on the renewed xenophobic uh, killings of Nigerians in South Africa, what's the federal government's stance is what we'll be looking at and recently we I uh, will also hear about the huge amount of money being remitted by Nigerians in the diaspora. We'll be putting our searchlight on that too. And today is World Tuna Day. Okay, now, first of all, you talked about the, the banning of uh, the codeine yeah. into Nigeria. Well, the importation, yeah. The importation of, yeah. of codeine. Well, I, do you really think that's a good idea? Yeah, very good idea because uh, obviously the, like, most northern youth, uh, youth in Nigeria, but majorly from the uh, northern uh, part of the France, country yeah. have abused that uh, drug syrup and so uh, the government deems it very necessary for it to be banned, the importation of codeine into the country. But, well, I, I was, when I heard the news, I, w I was thinking it's better off to sensitize these people on the dangers of drug abuse to censor, because even if you ban this codeine, they will still look for something else that would give them that same enhancement, because uh, apart from the fact that we have the one for the cough, we also have the one that's that gets people to another level. And, and, and so, so if, if you ban someone, definitely someone who is determined to always get high or always get to another level of, of, of expression will definitely look for something else. Maybe other things, he can also get something else to get himself to that point. So I think the, the, the sort of ban, the best thing is for you to sensitize these people on the dangers and, and, and you know, the ills that comes with these things. That is the angle I was looking at it from. All right, uh, <coughs> we know that enough that can some other uh, government agencies have uh, been doing that, uh, trying to sensitize people, especially the health sector as regards the dangers of uh, drug addiction. And uh, but it, it's uh, I think that's the because of how urgent and how high the abuse is currently. The federal government deems it very fit to first of all ban the importation. Then for those that are already on ground to see how they can mop it up while the sensitization process still goes on. And uh, it just means that NOA, uh, that's the National Orientation Agency, and other relevant agencies sh would have to do more, uh, like you said, in respect of letting the people know the dangers of this drug abuse. And, uh, but I think the ban is very, very necessary if you take into consideration the high number of people using it and the dependency. And it's very sad, it's not just the male folks, we yeah, also have the, the female too, and we especially also have mothers. yeah, mothers too. So it, it cuts across all zones, and uh, so it, it tells you how serious uh, the case is. Then going to the next, uh, the suicide bomb attack that occurred in Adamawa State. Very sad story. Uh, it it was a twin blast, and so it tells you that these persons are very determined to ensure that uh, lives are taken. Uh, true. It, it just shows that at this point, till, you know, till now we are still having um, uh, issues of bomb blasts and the rest of them. I, I think I was reading the news yesterday, and then we saw um, um, people who were dressed in, you know, with a whole lot of um, uh, guns and bombs and different things. It was on the it was on the, on the paper. No, was the paper? Yeah, I, I saw that news online yesterday morning. You know, they were dressed like priests. Okay. But they were actually going somewhere before, and they, they were bombers. yes, but they were they were caught, and and so it just so sad that at this point we still have a whole lot of things to battle. We still have the, the headers here on one side, and we still we, just when we thought that okay, at least we are done with this part. It's 
coming up again and it's not ceasing. So it's uh, very, very sad when you have a country where you have to um, um, battle with bombers and you have to battle with um, uh, uh, headsmen. I, I think that a whole lot needs to definitely be done. And uh, there's calling on support for us to support the Nigerian army, the Nigerian military, uh, to, so that they can get the job done. Uh, what they need is very timely and useful information as to very strange uh, movement and persons within your locality. I think that's going to help the Nigerian army to help quell this insurgence. And uh, it means that uh, it's not all done. We still have to be on the very high alert in case of anything that pops up. And also, uh, the sad commentary they occurred in uh, the Federal Capital Territory yesterday mm -hmm. where the, the bad condition of a uh, generator set in the Central Bank of Nigeria. Central yes. Bank of Nigeria, where the money is. Uh, having a bad generator set that smoked everywhere and it made it look like there was an attack on the building. You know, it's, it's really, Don't really, really sad. What's happening. <laughs> it's really, really sad that where our money is, you know, is stored. Because this could lead to very huge fire outbreak and uh, we hearing stories afterwards. Some, some people's money went, but it should not be our money. <laughs> but, but, but I think it's really, really sad. You know, when, when someone from outside Nigeria is um, listening to a, a story like this, you know, watching uh, a story like this on, on TV, he, he just has to wonder how can they not be, you know, a source of power apart from generator, at least even in the uh, CBN premises. It's really, really sad. It's really, it's really, really pathetic, I must say. This is not the kind of things which even if we were to see okay there was a there was a fire it shouldn't be that it, it, it was it was um it was generator it shouldn't be said like it, it just it just comes that okay we just have the nigerian syndrome again coming into play why do we have to hear that the generator really sad i would really say all right uh, there's what is called uh, solar energy in case uh god during the middle and cool do not remember i uh, could remind them about that all right uh, very interesting thing occurred yesterday may day where the uh, the speaker of the house of representatives uh, the Kubu Dogara did assure Nigerians that uh, they were ready to pass the bill talking about the minimum which once mm. they got to them from the executive. I think that's good news. Uh, it gives uh, the labor union and Nigerian workers some bit of hope that probably the elites for a change are willing to do them some favor which mm. constitutionally they're supposed to do, uh, carry out. So we hope that the executive will do the needful and pass it. Uh, onwards uh, for court review and for the House of Rep and the Senate to do the needful so that the Nigerian workers can begin to receive uh, 66,500 naira. Well, that means that uh, higher uh, transport fare, higher house rent, higher everything. So we, 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 we had our, in our analysis yesterday, they raised the issue that, okay, yes, there was, there was going to be a possibility of uh, inflation, but uh, the federal government could check that out by insisting on regulating prices of certain uh, basic amenities like the housing, food, stuff, and some other uh, relevant things. And I think that's the way to go if the federal government truly wants to uh, make sure that this new wage, living wage, is uh, sustainable and it makes sense. Because if they do not regulate the prices and it jumps up, then the money could be as good as not good enough. Well, some some have, have come out to say that instead of um, uh, talking about increment of your of your wage, why not um, you know hit on the issue of welfare packages, and which is not still a bad idea. Also, when you have some amazing, nice, there, there's some uh, um, companies that have welfare packages, and they're all very very juicy. So um, talk, talk, talk about, but it's not a bad idea if you also have welfare packages and also increment in your wage. All right, uh, double package for Nigerian <laughs> workers. They, they truly deserve it. They've been doing justice for national development. All right, it's time for us to give you the big stories making the rounds on the foreign scene. And uh, let's begin from the African continent. Now, Morocco has caught ties with Iran over separatist support. And uh, let's go and tell you that church attack in African Central Republic leaves 15 persons dead. A really sad where Japan, South Korea and China summit has been announced for May 9, 2018. And going to France, French President Emmanuel Macron is on his first visit to Australia. And um, Armenia main opposition leader uh, Pushin has called for nationwide protests for a parliament's vote against him becoming prime minister. And we've got Brexit tears uh, send customs automaton to UK prime minister. And Trump meets heroic Southwest Airlines crew. 
and a solid iPhone sales booster Apple earnings via 13.8 billion dollars in the last three months and is up by 25%. Well, of course, I'm not surprised looking at the way uh, people are rushing to get the new <laughs> iPhone right now, which is quite expensive, yeah, I must mine, say. Mine will be coming in the next one. Uh, are, are you serious? All right, let's go you to Paris. Tell me about that, Ellie. <laughs> All right, Paris uh, police arrest 200 people over May Day protests. Let's tell you that the Cardinal Pell is to face uh, two trials a uh, court has had. Amuela um, threatens Trump with a sub Buena over Russia probe. All right, so let's say that Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg's uh, dating services is to take on Tinder. Mm. Snapchat has redesigned its outlook after user growth dip. A United Nations uh, nuclear watchdog, IAEA, uh, are skeptical of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's uh, evidence of Iran's nuclear program. And Iran has rejected Israeli allegations that it covertly pursued nuclear weapons. And at least 15 people have drowned off the coast of Algeria. Let's now move on to a sporting arena where Barcelona hold a victory parade over their double trophies in the 2017-2018 season. And in the EBL, Tottenham Hotspur beat uh, Watford 2-0. SK Moscow failed to seal their Russian League Championship after a 2 0 loss to Krasnoda. All right, we're listening to Krasnoda there. Uh, in the Champions League, it was an awesome night last night in Spain. Uh, they said the rain when it falls, it pours. And in Spain, it was like that. Three minutes into the game, uh, where Real Madrid and Bayern Munich uh, knocked on in the second leg of the semi finals. And it was one nil in favor of uh, Bayern Munich in the first three minutes, mm -hmm. and it looked like uh, the Galacticos were heading for exit. Mm -hmm. And uh, before you knew it, eight minutes later, it took the French Benzema. man Benzema mm -hmm. to get the equalizer. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the next thing was a 2 1. Benzema got a, a, sec a second he goal. He almost got a hat trick that, yesterday. <laughs> that was a very, very huge error by Urich, uh, talking about the, the goalkeeper of uh, Bayern Munich, uh, Noah, who is the number one goalkeeper out still due to injury and uh, before you knew it it was 2-2 two -two, and uh, that was how it ended but four uh, goes to three was how the aggregate was and it was uh, the galacticos real madrid in the final once again for the third street season who's going to stop ronaldo and the galacticos <laughs> I felt bad yesterday, you know. Ronaldo, I, the, uh, at, until when I left uh, the match, the, uh, Ronaldo had missed two times. He was supposed Ch to chances, two chances. Yeah. He was supposed to score. I really felt bad. But the, the truth is, uh, when I saw there was a point, Benzema was about to score the third goal, and I was like, I wanted to just hear that hat trick. <laughs> I just wanted to hear it, but unfortunately, I didn't get it. And a lot of people, you know, were actually saying that they want Real Madrid to be out. Of, of the of the of the game and yeah, I the was player like, haters right <laughs> and, and i was like why do you want real madrid and, and most people are saying they want real madrid to be out that what do they what do real madrid think they are what do they think they are they the should be out. and, and <laughs> i'm like you you guys should just sit still and take a cup a cup of uh, uh, of water because they are not leaving they're not going anywhere <laughs> All right, uh, Real Madrid in the finals. Uh, congratulations to C. Ronaldo and Cole, and uh, we're hoping they're going to make it a uh, victory in the finals. But uh, keep our fingers crossed. All right, uh, it's time for us to hit the next segment where we get to know how big, how green, how white, and how lovely Nigeria is. Now, across Nigeria's 36 states and the FCT, economic inequality finds expression in the daily struggles of the large majority of the poor for survival in the face of the accumulation of obscene amount of wealth by a small number of individuals. All right, so let's say that poverty in Nigeria is a contradiction because it has been growing in the context of an expanding economy where the benefits have been reaped by a minority of people and have been bypassed by a majority of the population. According to a budget research from 2005 to 2015, a total of 77 trillion naira was appropriated through budget towards the development of the country. Yet, the state of road electricity and water supply, schools and hospitals remain inadequate to meet even the basic needs for a large part of the population. Very sad story about Nigeria there, but uh, let's leave Nigeria and get to see how well Africa is doing. Well, the 2014 Human Development Index ranked Algeria 83 
Angula 149, Benin, Bene 166, Botswana 106, Burkina Faso 183, uh, Burundi 184, Cape Verde 122, Cameroon 153, Central African Republic 187, and Chad 185. Still on the 2014 Human Development Index uh, uh, ranking, DR Congo was ranked 136. Uh, we also have Cote d'Ivoire ranked uh, 172, Djibouti is ranked 168, Egypt 108, Equatorial Guinea is placed 138, Eritrea is on the 186, we've got Ethiopia with 174, Gabon 110, Gambia is ranked 179, while your beloved country Nigeria is ranked 152 amongst nations. Now, let's move on to uh, the Human Development Index of 2014. Uh, well, Ghana ranks 140, Guinea 182, Guinea-Bissau 178, Kenya 145, Lesotho 161, Liberia 177, Libya 94, Madagascar 154, Malawi 173, Mali 179, Mauritania 156, Mauritius 63, uh, Morocco 126, Zambique 180, and Namida 126. Now you know the rankings, um, you, you can keep your uh, facts right. Let's go to world statistics and give you something that you can take to the bank and definitely will not be wrong. During the last century, development in advanced economies have followed a path that was more or less uh, linear. Activity moved from agriculture to industry services. Now, the sectoral distribution of economic activity is reflected both in value added as a proportion of GDP in unemployment by sector. All right, uh, moving over to the nation file. Today, we're focusing on Saudi Arabia. Nice. All right, uh, Saudi Arabia officially. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is an Arab sovereign state in Western Asia, constituting the bulk of the Arabian Peninsula. Saudi Arabia is graphically uh, the fifth largest state in Asia and second largest state in the Arab world after Algeria. Algeria is in Africa. Mm. Saudi Arabia is bordered by Jordan and Iraq to the north, Kuwait to the northeast, Qatar, Bahrain, and the United Arab Emirates to the east. Oman to the southeast and Yemen to the south. All right, uh, it is separated from Israel and Egypt by the Gulf of Aqaba. It is the only nation with both a Red Sea coast and a Persian Gulf coast, and most of its uh, territory consists of arid desert and mountains. Saudi Arabia. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was founded in 1932 by Arabian Saud, the United the four regions into a single state through a series of conquests beginning in 1902 with the capital Riyadh, the ancestral home of his family, the House of Saud. All right, let's tell you that Saudi Arabia joined the United Nations in 1945 and is the founding member of the Arab League uh, Global Cooperation Council. Muslim World League and the organization of the Islamic Conference, now the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. It plays a prominent role in the International Military Fund and the World Bank and in 2005 joined the World Trade Organization. Since 1960, as a founding member of OPEC, its oil pricing policy has been generally to stabilize the world oil market and try to moderate sharp price movement so as to not jeopardize the Eastern economies. Now you know more about Saudi Arabia. All right, it's time for us to go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll be looking at the papers right here. Uh, with us in Nigeria's National Dailies, we look at the big stories so that you can get well informed.
third straight season. Ref in the second leg of a semifinal. He was in charge of Real Madrid semifinal second leg last year. He's underway. Real Madrid back to the familiar white. Byron Rodriguez. Swinger. That's the punch. So the defensive score. Very early goal. The second leg of the quarter. Flooding in for Bayern. Muller's cross. Robs knocking it down. Kimmich, as he did on the first leg, scores the opening goal. Bayern still need one more, but it is a perfect start for the visitors. Less than three minutes played. What a start for Bayern Munich. And we saw Kimmich's influence on the first leg. He was kept largely in check. But he has 17 assists on the season, five goals, but here's the sixth. Just finds himself in an attacking position. Motor comes out wide right and opens up the space for him to get in. They don't deal with it. Ramos in the middle. And he just pokes it home. What a start. Across the four Bayern player will roll that in for Kareem Benson. A first time ball, and Ronaldo could turn it on target. It will come out to meet him. And that lovely first touch by Marcelo. Now able to get across, and Benzema was there! Kareem Benzema! Just his second goal in his last 19 appearances in the knockout stages of the Champions League. To give Real Madrid some semblance of control once again in the semi-funnel. And we were just talking about Bayern Munich's shape defensively. And the one time that they don't get out quickly enough to stop the... Cristiano Ronaldo. Benzema able to turn. Modric wants it back. He's got Ronaldo there as well. Zula came diving in. Beat Real Madrid players. Now the Germany World Cup winning set back. In for Lewandowski. Navas got a foot of the way. Muller still a chance. Vasquez across for Karim Benzema. Cristiano Ronaldo on David Oliva. Ronaldo on his left. Ronaldo trying to catch all right. Finals the first five. It's all right there. Missed it. It's an empty net for Kareem Benzema. It is a catastrophe for Bayern Munich. 20 seconds into the second half. Second goal for Benzema. And now a little bit of breathing room for the two-time defending champions. Oh, dearie me. What an absolute shocker this is. Play the outlet. Onside Asensio. Alba quicker to it. 50% position. They've won all three games. Alba's cross. Too close to Navas. And that includes the first leg with Iron and that first. Kasula is crossed. A bit of a deflection hit by Hobbes. Is that a hand? Hobbes for to lose. Oh, dead! He will not celebrate against his parents. Welcome back from that break. If you're just joining us, you're watching an Africa's finest breakfast show. It's called Daybreak Nigeria on television, Nigeria. My name is Anthony Momodu. It's time for us to look at the big stories making their rounds right here in Nigeria. We've got the Daily Sun, the leadership, and the Sporting Sun for you, not forgetting the Daily Trust, the Point, and also the Nation's newspaper, and Cynthia, as she says, she not call her name, but she goes <laughs> on this work, kick started. All right, the big story here on the uh, Daily Trust this morning says no going back on 66,500 minimum wage. NLC, TUC, and uh, demand for welfare, not wage increase, expert tells workers. Uh, you'll find that story continue on um, page five of the Daily Trust. Bomb blast killed 27 in movie mass market. That's on page four. Federal government bans production and importation of codeine syrups. You'll find that on page U.S. finalizes repatriation of over $500 million to Nigeria. That is on page 3. Now, budget really passed this week, simply that is on page 14. Kaduna APC tells Ahunkuyu, a 
Yong Kui to steer clear of congresses. That is on page 13 of the Daily Trust. Now, behind him, I just want to see some very uh, something very interesting. Yes, Salah voted England's footballer of the year, talking about Mohamed Salah. And uh, can you three guests at Wenger's uh, last game on Emirates? That is on page 46. And uh, Muti Sat as a Rangers manager. Uh, that is also behind the, the Daily Trust paper this beautiful morning. Uh, let's talk about um, the U.S. Uh, uh, wanting to send over a repatriation of the $500 million to Nigeria. But could it be some very, because of the meeting that the president had, uh, we're trying to make sure that everything goes out smooth. Well, well, yeah, definitely. Okay. We have to say it's because of the meeting because it's a fallout of the uh, recent meeting. But the only sad part of it, which I think is going to uh, of course, the fact that once that money is repatriated back to Nigeria, uh, it means that we need to use that same funds to complete the balance of uh, the Super Tucano aircraft that we bought from the US. Uh, so, most likely, that's why they'll be very willing to ensure that the money is repatriated back to Nigeria so that we can. So, so <laughs> US first. Uh, uh, of course, it, it has to be. Yeah, that, that, that's what it's all. I think in Nigeria, we have to also come to. And Nigeria first, but just the past this week, how certain are you uh, about that? Right, uh, it's time to tell. Uh, we've had them give us several dates in the past, but they didn't keep to it recently because the executive and legislature were always at each other's throat. But let's see if uh, something's going to change. You know, as we draw closer to the election, uh, yeah, uh, things might begin, to, fences might begin to mend so that the release of this money will be mutual for the benefit of all those concerned uh, stakeholders uh, up there. And they know that uh, once the budget is passed, then things can begin to happen. Sure. All right, this is what the Delison has. All right, the Delison says, uh, as Nigerians celebrate Workers' Day, uh, bomb kills uh, 68 persons, 56 others injured in a Jamal team blast present orders recruitment of 6,000 this man. And now we've got a uh, generator smoke causes panic. CBN dispels rumor of fire. Page 38 is, is where you get that big story. And now we've got INEC partner confirms under eight voters in Kano. Most northern youths uneducated, says uh, the president. And page 3 and 6 is where you find that story. We've got Kalu decries attack on Ohaneze, president general. And then we'll use residents also. Page 10 is where you get the details of uh, who's attacking who. And we've got more telephone coming from U.S. government speaks, Nigeria, America draw roadmap for repatriation of $500 million. And I've got IPOB Lord uh, Trump on charge to Buhari, Islamic body disagrees. Uh, that big story on P6 and 39 of the daily Uh But let's go quickly to, we've got a drug addiction, federal government bans production of codeine, syrup, and page 4 is where you get a story. Uh, I want to take a uh, let you share your thoughts on INEC panel confirms on the eight voters in Kano. No, well, it is not like, like I was saying, it's not a new, some of these are not new things. There are things that already um, uh, some weeks back, uh, or I think a month, a month back, it was where they had a committee looking into that. And of course, the committee came out and gave a report and said, yes, it's, it has been confirmed on the eight voting. Right. And, but the thing that is, it's not about telling us to confirm and all that. Right? What are you doing? What are you doing to make sure this doesn't happen? Already, we, we've already been, been seeing some 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 discrepancies, or you know, some of these things. So, like, like what, what happened um, over the weekend when we had um, uh, the case of uh, people not coming, you know, in Kogi State during the Dino recall uh, process, and then some some people had multiple names. You know, people were complaining. You see one like like your name, Anthony Momodu. You can see Momodu Momodu Philip. Momodu this, Momodu that, Anthony this, Anthony that, and then your real name will still also be there, Anthony Momodu. So it just, there was more of duplication. So I think that apart from the under age voting, the, the ANEC also need to look into the issue of duplication of names and make sure that everything, so it, it's not about telling us that you confirm under age voting in Kano. Do something about it. Do you it. think uh, anything concrete is going to be done, knowing that that's where the majority of the president votes is going to come from? Do you think ANEC could be sincere enough to clamp down on those of our age voters and strike their name out of the voters' list? I, I would I would not categorically tell you that INEC will do this because I am I'm not the INEC boss. I don't know what is 
going through his mind. I don't, I don't know how he intends to go about it. But what, what I, I said, uh, average Nigeria or what most Nigerians would want to happen, except you're not, uh, except you're criminally minded and you won't want that, is to make sure that some of these things are brought down to the, to the, to the, to the minimal level. Now, if we have, yes, we have more of the, the voters coming for, from Mr. President, coming from the North. And like some people will say, he will pay the price of the tune. Now, I, I just feel that Anna should know that he's not just working for one person. He's not for, he's not there to, um, to favor one person. So in reality, do you think they, they see it that way? Well, in reality, they actually do not see it that way. But but the thing is, you have to get to, um, we, we need to begin, begin to come out of the scheme that we are used to. You need to get to own up to the fact that, yes, I am not there for just one person. I am not there for just a group of people. I am there for a category of people. I am there for all Nigerians. And so it is your duty and it is your responsibility as a Frenchman to make sure that you give Nigerians that which they desire. And what we desire is very simple. Let there be a, 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 a look into the issue of that equity. Look into the issue of um, of uh, having multiple names and, and no people registering with people who are not even existing, people who are, who are dead. You know, you imagine you see your great grandmother's name there, meanwhile, she's not even alive to, to your generation. It, it, it's, it's what the INH man needs to really look at. And so he, this particular election, this particular period, he needs to tell himself, okay, I am there to, for the favor, favor of Nigerians, not favor of some group of people. And so I think that Nigeria will respect him the more and we will applaud him, we will love him the more. Once that is done. I hope that is done. Uh, speaking to Yakub Mamou uh, Yakub, uh, who is the, uh, the man in charge of INEC. But uh, it's worrisome, I have my fears. <laughs> if you remember the fact that Jega had a very, uh, seemed to have a very good reputation, integrity, but mm -hmm. uh, we still had other eight votes in Kano, which he could not spot or couldn't do much about. And so I well, let's keep our fingers crossed and see what is up. But uh, I like to introduce the uh, president says uh, recruit 6,000 new policemen. Why? Uh, because 68 persons were killed in Adama in the three bomb blast and you wonder. Uh, but, but, but they killed, the but, were they killed because of insufficiency of policemen or were they killed because they were not on alert? Were they, but was, uh, it's not just about recruiting. That is one thing um, they get to understand. It's not just about recruiting. It can never be enough. We know yeah. that. It can never be enough. Security is very important. There is no disputing that. But it's not just about recruiting. The ones you have recruited, how efficient are you using them? How well have they been trained? How alert are these people? This is not a time where uh, um, um, a security person is, a personnel is meant to relax and be t having a, 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 a having cocktail. Do you understand? This is a time where as a security personnel, you should like, especially when you're in places like Adamawa, places like Kogi, places like Benme, places like Jiga, places, there are places that you, you're not supposed to sit down and cross your legs. So it's not about recruiting, it's about the ones that are there. You make them understand that at this point in time, you are not meant, you are meant to be alert. Everything about you is meant to be alert. Watch out for movements, like, like they always used to tell us, watch out for movement, strange, you know, strange um, um, behavior. And, and all of that. So it's not about recruiting because it's a dark about recruiting 6,000. All right, so let's see how that plays out. But if you go to the police college in uh, Kaduna, then you get to know the kind of police officers who are actually recruiting. <laughs> all right, uh, that's, uh, I think that's all I have for the daily sir. All right, uh, moving on to the nation right now. Uh, we have uh, Obasan Jaws, don't run letter was abusive says Buhari. And the writer here says present orders recruitment of 6,000 policemen. States can't fund own police. Okay, bringing us back to uh, what we're trying to say. And um, gov uh, government will deliver on new minimum wage. You find that story continue on uh, page 6. And also we have 31.4 million customers captured in BVN, says CBN. That uh, story continues on uh, page 6. Also, 27 died in Adamawa explosions. Uh, that is on page 42. Chief hold procession over Benue killings on page 42. Dr. says U.S. visa revoked over Luta's list. That is on page 7. Eagles will shine in Russia, says a table on page 47. And Nigeria to get $500 million. Will get 
one from the US that is on page um, seven. Boys, body found in lorry and a Shidoka. I have nothing to do with 3.5 billionaire fraud. You will find that story on page seven. Gunmen killed Dixon's aide. Mm, that is on page five. And cannot title seeker to undergo drug tests. Is that, is that, a, good, is that a good signal? Title seekers and Google what test. Uh, what's going to be the outcome? Failure or <laughs> to go to It's going to be interesting to see how that uh, pans out, but I wonder why uh, they decided to go that, uh, that route. But uh, let's see. Let's see if it's going to fail the drug test. Uh, I, I just can't wait to see the list. All right, so let's look at this show. The person's US visa revoked over Luther's list. What's, what does this mean? Well, I, I think it just tells us the international uh, community is taking it uh, very serious. Um, the fact that you're already has a bad reputation back home. Uh, but it's really appalling that someone of his status who should know better is involved in such a, such a mess which is going to dent his reputation and uh, whatever he represents. Yep. Does this mean that uh, all the people that, that their names were actually on that uh, yeah, well, Luther's list, they, they'll be having uh, their, their visas revoked when, when it's signed? It, it will be a that's fantastic gonna be, That's going to be a good test. So we'll see if it's just going to be for the person or everybody who is on that uh, Luther's list. If it's everybody, then it's, it's fine. Some it's people have shot themselves on yeah. their foot. But if it's just the person, then we, we can begin to say probably the federal government is technically fighting corruption selectively like Selective they've always been uh, uh, alleged to so but i think it's good it's going to also discourage the would-be looters to try not to get involved in it knowing that it's going to be not just a national embarrassment or national uh lockdown but also on the international scene they're going to be uh, look out for well but the, the, the truth is the part I'm, I'm so i'm so waiting for is to know um if this is how it's going to be for all the names on the Lotus list, I can't wait for the show uh, to begin, definitely. Let's talk about uh, Dr. Basson Jones. Don't run on it, uh, when Mr. President has said. He, he finds it abusive. Uh, I think if Mr. President uh, called uh, his own statement uh, during campaign season uh, before the exit of, uh, Jonathan. of Jonathan, he also, knew, he also made some very abusive uh, statements that would have cost the country to get into chaos. Uh, so I think uh, usually when you're being told the truth, it hurts and uh, it doesn't come out really nice. So I'm not surprised he's saying it, it, it hurts, uh, but that's is the truth he's being told. But I hope he also takes the truth out of the heart in it and uh, see if, he, because if he's not saying anything good from the letter, then he's not being also honest talking about Mr. President. All right. Alright, let's go to the leadership newspaper. We've got federal government bans the protection of codeine cough syrup. That story is on page six of the leadership. We've got May Day, worst days over for Nigerian workers. Says the federal government blames corruption, mismanagement for states, inability to pay salaries and pension. We've got NLC TC at George Ben Ayade, best labor friendly governor in Nigeria. Uh, page five is where we get that story. Uh, can you confirm that to us? Well, that's your tweet, right? Do you have to tell everyone? No, I'm just asking the question. Is that your say? So compared to all of that... Of course, that yes. I am I'm probably close river. Uh, but, but the thing is... Um, well, if you want to say... Well, you can, we, we can the give best labor-friendly governor. Uh, well, reports coming from that angle make, make me understand that yes, he keeps to um, time of paying salaries. Okay. So if he's from that angle they are coming from, yeah, well, that's fantastic. That's yes, that's he, he keeps to uh, the list the information I, I, I have. He keeps time in paying salaries. He makes sure that... Um, you know, workers get their salaries, you know, before, before, from, from... Are you being cross no, 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 it's, it's not just me being cross patriotic, okay. it's about, the, from, based on, on the, the comments I've gotten from that past, you know, coming to me here in Africa, I've, I've heard a couple of things, I have, you know, they're, they're, they're basically just, you okay. get the stories from, from that side, they've always said it, from, from, from 24th of, of a particular month, just be sure that your, your salary will start coming, from 24th... I think we have to do work there. <laughs> You know, from 24th to about, um, I think, uh, just from 24th, just okay. to your salary will definitely get to you. So, who would work out doing love something like that when he knows that, okay, from 24th down to the end, my salary will come any of those That's days? he's called the left governor, right? Uh, well, he's, <laughs> All right. our governor is a digital governor. All right, I would like to also confirm we had he, he's one of the most stylish. 
fluent in Nigeria. Is that true? Oh yes, our governor is very stylish. He, he has he has um he has shown that he has displayed that on several occasions oh, where okay. where you know he finds himself. We can, we can also see his his display. You know during the last uh, carnival, you know he, he was it was a massive. But you know the previous carnival, some said that um uh, the former governor Donald Duke, you know beat him to to the to the display. And, and the last one he came and he was well prepared. And, but apart from the carnival, his 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 outlook, his appearances, he's he's always very very smart. And he, he was you can't you cannot just say that um, you have noticed how okay? stylish Ayadi I, I, I is. That All is right, just. Baby, give it to you as a best and labor friendly governor in Nigeria. All right, uh, the uh, big story says the Niger residents get free malaria treatment. Uh, that's straight on page seven of the leadership newspaper. Our achievements will shock critics, says uh, President Muhammad Buhari. <laughs> Is this shocking the positive or in the negative? If it's in the negative world, I don't think the judges will be shocked. We, or in the positive? We, we, maybe in the positive, we might get to be shocked okay. um, you know, as a What's people. The, what uh, achievements will shock you? With all honesty, I'm not in the right position to answer that particular question. Maybe, maybe we should um, ask Mr. President to tell us some of those achievements, so that maybe we have, you know, sometimes it's possible for you to, to look and you're not seeing. So maybe we have just been looking, but we are not seeing. So perhaps by the time he lets us know, we'll then get to see uh, with him as to why he said to. All right, I know one achievement you cannot take away from this administration is one week, one drama. <laughs> Exciting to talk about in Nigeria. All right, uh, those are the big stories on the leadership newspaper. I probably want to say a uh, belated happy birthday to Sam Inda Azaya, uh, who is the chairman of the leadership. Uh, this is his birthday. All right, uh, let's go to the next. All right, the last one I have here happens to be the punch and the punching, punching, punch. All right, so I have some picture stories where we have uh, you know, events from the labor papers with disabilities. Uh, marching past the journalists also uh, marching past agri sector workers with their uh, ramp marching past and also nurses and midwives also um, are marching past so may they live another see one sixty six thousand minimum wage for all workers uh, cdn test reveals loopholes in banks and team on laundry systems uh, system uh, that is really nice uh, fire uh, scare at apex bank headquarters that is on page uh, 23. Secondus rejects Dio as Ogun, PDP chair. That is on page 7. I spent 26 years in jail for fighting mechanic. That is ex prisoner talking on uh, page 4 and 5. Now, uh, killing Trump's comment, a wake up call to Harry. This is coming from Khan, Feni Ferry, and others. As 27 Dina Dama bomb attacks, Muslim group berates US president. Also, we have God will judge Nigeria's past leaders, says Buhari. Accuses predecessors of completing few projects. That is a page 2 and 15. Senate panel presents impeachment report today, grills IG on the line. That is on page 12. And the federal government bans importation of codeine. That is on page 7. And Nigeria's unemployment poverty rate increased in 2017. That is coming from World Bank and it's on page 24. First, let's look at God will judge Nigeria's past leaders. Hey, that's in yes, including Buhari also, because uh, as I've been the president now, he was in the president in the past, and uh, there are some things that they also didn't do right. And he had access to these past leaders. What did he do as a person to change their mindset on some policies that wasn't right? So, as he's saying, uh, he's going to be part of those other jobs. <laughs> that means he definitely pray for himself. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, so and, um, let's let's talk about uh, the 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 CBN test reveals loopholes in banks' anti-money laundering system. I think uh, if CBN says that she, uh, she's not aware that this was going on before this test, then I'll be a very big lie. And, uh, but also shows. At least now we have a proof or an evidence, forensic evidence to say yes, uh, deliberately these banks have uh, allowed this to post B in order to you know, carry out money laundering and all that. We hope that these banks and the, the chiefs uh, who are in charge uh, get fired or um, at least made to pay some bit of fine for allowing this to uh, without uh, stopping it because uh, they cannot release it, they're not aware 
as these things are going on. Um, for the city of Cobb, give them some kudos for coming out with this. We hope this is going to uh, stop uh, money laundering in the long run. All right. All right, let's go to the spot now. We've now got the spotting sun here for review. Uh, the big story here says Roma takes on Liverpool 7.45 p.m. is the time. It's Champions League night once again. Uh, we will fight for our dreams in Rome, says Club Jürgen. Club is the uh, coach of uh, Liverpool. They'll never walk alone. We'll get to see tonight if they will be walking alone or not. We've got Real Madrid lands in 16th uh, final. And uh, Real 2, Bayern 2, 4-3 at Aggregate. Uh, the Galacticos are uh, in the finals once again. We've got Salah crowned again, wins FWA Player of the Year award. And UV is a 43 million Euros Morata reunion. Chelsea joins Marcia's race, and that's on the back page. We've got Fury, I am better than ever. Talking about kickboxing there. And we've got Tepinic, tracks Eagles 24 hours ahead of Russia 2018 World Cup. And the question is, is Amadou Pinic now the coach of the Super Eagles that he's tracking the players 24 hours? Uh, the question uh, that uh, he should let the job be for General who is the coach. We've got Robert Tops, uh, player of the month, shortlist. Um, 43 days to the World Cup. The fever is getting down. Tell me that we're barely three months to the 2018 World Cup. We've got a World Cup seminar. Ex uh, Eagle, Laho Lot, the Sun. Those are the big stories on the Sporting Sun. Go out there. Uh, it costs a little. So you get more, no more about your super eagles as it gets set for the World Cup. Uh, but for you, let's uh, try off to Cross uh, City <laughs> once again. Uh, the last time we predicted that Roma and uh, Liverpool, you said 3 new and it ended 5 2 mm. in favour of the Reds uh, tonight. Which mm. way does it go? We're, we're going to Roma versus Liverpool. So the match is in Italy and uh, ah. Liverpool is playing from away. After winning 5 2 in the first leg, what's your expectations? Uh, Roma didn't win 5 2. Roma no, that's two. Liverpool yes. won 5 2, yeah. Mm. So today is Roma versus Liverpool. Liverpool okay. yeah. uh, let's see. Christopher, look at let's it. Let's see. Let's Deep. see. Roma, Liverpool. I think we should go there. When we will come back. The ball will be bright. All right. Uh, she's now heavily distracted by Faith. So we'll come back from the break uh, and get her prediction. Live television on the go? Think no more. Television Nigeria has got you covered. No matter your age, your education, language, tribe, or religion. Whether it is in your car, your office, or any other place of your choice, you can depend on Television Nigeria anytime, any day, and anywhere. We are online 24/7. You can catch the latest news politics, sports, and entertainment via your mobile phone, your tablet, or any other device at no extra data charges or costs, just like our Facebook page, Television Nigerian. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Television Nigerian, and also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at TV Nigerian to enjoy all that television can offer. Television Nigerian. Welcome to Living Treasures Academy. Enjoy a conducive and serene learning environment. Qualified and experienced teachers. Equipped computer laboratory and library. Secured atmosphere. Extracurricular activities and all of racing curriculum for total development of the child comprehensive education full leadership join us today from crash to secondary levels leaving treasures academy committed to excellence 
For almost a decade, the Nigerian army have given their all to ensure that our dear country is not overrun by Boko Haram insurgents. Some have in the process paid the ultimate price, while many will forever live with indelible scars occasioned by their determination to protect the country, no matter the hurdle. Despite these, they have remained resolute and undaunted, and today, all territories the insurgents want to control of have been recaptured and normalcy restored. And now, for the first time in a long time, the end of Boko Haram is foreseeable. Therefore, the wisest thing for the remaining insurgents to do is to surrender today or face total destruction from the army. Remember, the Nigerian army will stop at nothing to ensure that total peace is restored in all parts of the country. So, be wise and embrace peace today or get ready to be ruthlessly dealt with. This message is brought to you by the Coalition on Conflict Resolution and Human Rights in Nigeria. All right, welcome back. The program is still Daybreak Nigeria right here on television, Nigerian. And of course, uh, this is the part where we just have to um, chew over some, some very big stories, you know, that that's been happening around, some human angle stories. And we'd like to, first of all, before we go to the show, police, you know, at first I was, uh, I was saying, why would they... The police is your friend, remember? Yeah, I know the police is my friend, and of course... And they... bail is free. Are you... Have we said now we, we talked about that um, you know some some weeks back when we said bail is free, but but people some people still complain that um, they still go to uh, the, the 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 police station to bail someone and they still ask them for uh, you know some some things and so they they, they actually need to look into that aspect also because we, if you tell us bail is free and we get there and we still have to pay and there's something I heard someone complain about that a, a, a woman cannot uh, bail someone. I, I think that also needs to be look, looked at. If 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 I can, if if something is happening, maybe they arrested you, for example, and you call me and you say, "Oh, Cynthia, look at what has happened to me. This is where I am." And you say, "Because I am a lady, I cannot come and bill uh, bill Anthony." That is that doesn't that doesn't anti gender. You know, that, <laughs> that is not that is not nice. Don't you think so? <laughs> Obviously, there are a lot of reforms, uh, but it looks like the Nigerian police have been not been very sincere in terms of. Uh, Willingness or the political will or whatever will you want to attach to it to change their ways. Uh, for instance, we talk about roadblocks. Uh, the first thing the Inspector General of Police, uh, Ibrahim Ije, said when he took over from Arasi was uh, all roadblocks dismounted Dismantle. across the country. But that's a very big uh, force uh, because we know that there are still loads of roadblocks in the country. And just a few weeks back, he he retreated that uh, announcement saying all roadblocks should be dismounted, especially local government tax force uh, people who block roads. Uh, but we still see roadblocks across the country, even in the Federal Capital Territory. Uh, they've, several times they've told us that 
bill is free, uh, but bill has never been free in Nigeria as long as I can remember. And it just tells you that, uh, uh, for instance, there was a conversation we had with uh, uh, the police officer who was in charge of uh, police welfare and the the attitude of policemen talking about Shugunle, Abayomi Shugunle. Uh, he, we, we, we shared the idea of why don't you have CCTVs in police stations so that when they ask for uh, bail and they want money and all that, you can easily track them and punishment method out. Uh, but they seem not to like that concept. They give excuses why they cannot be CCTV. But I think it uh, just shows you the willingness to change uh, their ways. and. Well, one thing I've been able to gather about all of this is that I was listening to a report and the man said he went to Bill, was it his cousin or so, and the policeman told him that, yes, Bill is free, but you have to pay for staying over, over a night. <laughs> Do you understand? So like, like what it means, you, you went to lodge in a hotel or you went somewhere. Yes, Bill is free, but you have to, you stayed overnight, so you have to pay for that. Understand? So I, I think that um, it, it, it needs to be looked to. And the issue of CCTV, it, it, uh, I, I, can, I can understand. I, I, think no, I can understand the reason why they cannot have CCTV in their in, police in the, station. In the police station. Because it's for their own good and for the good of uh, the community. Because if anything, if there's an attack, like we usually hear at times, mm -hmm. uh, the CCTV footage is going to help us catch the culprits and also catch them when they are asking for... Um, Bill. 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 Uh, Bill. True. And, and also, you, you talk about the issue of the roadblock. I, I think that even when the IG has said, okay, all road all roadblocks should be removed and all of that. And some people, now, the, the thing is, in as much as it's his duty to make sure that he goes around all of these states to see that there is, there is an, and make sure that all of these things are implemented. But the, 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 the policeman out there who definitely will want to get his own, because some of these roadblocks are used to get their you say they are own share of the national cake. National cake or national moe moe, whatever it is that you want to call it. And, and so it is just, it helps them to get it. So if they're not being, I think the, the welfare of the police needs to also be looked into. And that brings me, you know, leads me to the issue of the, the, the 6,000 uh, 6, um, new, new recruits. Re recruits. The has it, it's a fantastic idea. Although earlier than I said, I don't see any any sense, but looking at it one, uh, uh, again, yes, it's actually a fantastic idea. Because looking at the population of Nigeria, looking at you know, the need for, for, for security in the country, well, other smaller countries have more more police force. But, okay. but, the, but the thing is that the wealth of the police needs to also be looked into. So if we are having more people, they should be equipped, they should be well taken care of, so that these people don't end up becoming like the, the way we see, because you know, you know the truth is, when we see a man on black these days, we just feel, oh, no. And I think we can just police just officers, exit. some of the police officers have not been fair to the, to the force. They painted the force in very bad light with their attitude, the way they uh, relate with, with the civil society and the, uh, the citizenry. Uh, for the 6,000, my fear is they should be a reform in the way the recruitment process mm -hmm. of uh, the Gen police officers so that you change your mindset from the previous ones we had before uh, so that they don't think like a collecting of a bribe is, 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 is a good thing. This accidental discharge we, we always hear. Like we uh, saw in the case of uh, in, in Abia State when in Abia State. this man sh so, um, I, I shot think, someone. Uh, so if those reforms are carried out then when you're bringing in new 6,000 police officers you're sure there'll be better police officers, they'll be well equipped, uh, both emotionally and otherwise, knowing the, the, knowing the rules of engagement and how, knowing that the citizen pays tax for their upkeep, and so they should respect the citizens that are there to be, to protect them, not to intimidate them. Uh, if those things are cleared up, then it, we're going to have a better Nigerian police force. And I, I think 6,000 for me is still minute. Uh, I expected the president to make it 10,000 like he did the, the previous time uh, because we actually need more manpower in the Nigerian police. And uh, just take, going driving on the streets of the FCT and you see the way the SAS office, officers behave, uh, these uh, anti theft, mm -hmm. car theft office, officials behave, they, you just know that they're just there to extort. Uh, the Nigerian people, they're not really there to check that your car is not mm. stolen or you're not driving a stolen car because uh, 
naturally you expect an officer to be psychologically uh, sound that when you see someone who is driving a stolen car to an extent you should be able to tell you don't exactly. see someone who is well cultured he's with his id you know he's he goes to eight or nine to five job and you see him you're harassing him telling him to at the time where you know he's supposed to be heading to the office or he's just coming back from work it just tells you that this person uh, do not just uh, they do not check them out properly who should belong where generally i, I believe agree with you i i think that um the general conduct of our security personnel now i'm not saying uh, police i'm not saying the the, the, uh, um, the military, military or yeah. navy or no 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 i'm just saying our military i mean i mean our our security personnel yeah. generally i think the general conduct needs to be looked into as a matter of fact now i remember early this year we had um, there was this thing trending on twitter where they were having uh, NSAS, 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 NSAS. Yes. and that is because it, it became it, it, it became consistent it became a regular thing where they have to harass you oh, because they see you with the laptop who oh, automatically you've become um what they call it a phone a phone a phone star. A fraud star you know what they call yahoo yahoo and, and the rest of them just tag you they see a young guy looking good driving his car and they just say okay this is what you do and i think that they need to be trained in all of this they need to be trained uh, you know, to, to their, mindset, to, their too. mindset. Now, I remember, now that, that makes me remember something that happened uh, when I was in school. There was a day I was coming back because while I was, I was also working, I was coming back from work that morning. And I, 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 I know most of the security people because I go, they come back early and all of that. And so the, we had a conversation with the, the chief um, security uh, amongst them. And there was something he told me. Then he made me understand something. He said that the way his people are being trained then in school he said he can be able to detect which person who is a cultist once he sees you coming even if you're walking alone he can detect who is a normal criminal he can detect and i was when i while i was when i was done talking with him and i was leaving he come, i was like if this is how you know most of our security personnel are being trained it will go a long way so that you will get to know you know the body language you know you just see the person and you can be able to detect which it which some people might say you are using black magic but it is it goes it is not just about black but it goes to intelligence if 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 it's not about employing um, recruiting 6000 people in fact it's not even enough just that we need more but the government should also try as much as possible to equip these people not just with guns, not just with uh, uniforms, not just with uh, anything, but the most important thing is intelligence. And then the process of recruitment should also be made, they should have a certain, I, I really don't know the, the criteria in which they, they use in selecting because if it is, if it was a very high one, I do not think we we'll have some of these people that we see, you know, Putting the, the 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 police and the the, the security, uh, uh, you know, the security world, you know, making it look a mockery, you know, so, so to say. So I think all of this needs to be checked. You know, who is coming in? Yes, we want plenty. We want good uh, plenty of hands, but we should not just have quantity. We should also have quality. All right, uh, to wrap up this uh, this course, I will also call in on the fact that. Uh, it, 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 a very detailed background check should be done as regards uh, this new to be recruited 6,000 police officers going fully where they will still have Boko Haram remnants mm. uh, within the country space so that they do not infiltrate the Nigerian police and cause more harm. So we're calling on the relevant authorities, the Nigerian Police uh, Service Commission led by Michael Kiro and others to do the needful just to ensure that a very good background check is done before uh, this set of Nigerians are recruited into the Nigerian police force. We'll be going for a quick break. When we come back, uh, new daybreak definitely would continue. Television on the go, think no more. Television Nigeria has got you covered no matter your age, your education, language, tribe, or religion. Whether it is in your car, 
your office or any other place of your choice. You can depend on Television Nigeria anytime, any day, and anywhere. We are online 24-7. You can catch the latest news, politics, sports, and entertainment via your mobile phone, your tablet, or any other device at no extra data charges or costs. Just like our Facebook page, Television Nigerian. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Television Nigerian. And also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at TV Nigerian to enjoy all that television can offer. Television Nigerian. Broadcast beyond boundaries. Welcome to Living Treasures Academy. Enjoy a conducive and serene learning environment. Qualified and experienced teachers. Equipped computer laboratory and library. Secured atmosphere. Extracurricular activities. An all embracing curriculum for total development of the child. Comprehensive education for leadership. Join us today from crash to secondary levels. Leaving Treasures Academy. Committed to excellence. For almost a decade, the Nigerian Army have given their all to ensure that our dear country is not overrun by Boko Haram insurgents. Some have in the process paid the ultimate price, while many will forever live with indelible scars occasioned by their determination to protect the country, no matter the hurdle. Despite these, they have remained resolute and undaunted, and today, all territories the insurgents want to control of have been recaptured and normalcy restored. And now, for the first time in a long time, the end of Boko Haram is foreseeable. Therefore, the wisest thing for the remaining insurgents to do is to surrender the day or face total destruction from the army. Remember, the Nigerian army will stop at nothing to ensure that total peace is restored in all parts of the country. So, be wise and embrace peace today or get ready to be ruthlessly dealt with. This message is brought to you by the Coalition on Conflict Resolution and Human Rights in Nigeria.
All right, welcome back from that break. If you're just joining us, we're watching Africa's finest breakfast show, Daybreak Nigeria, on television, Nigeria. Uh, it's now time for us to uh, keep our discourse open. Uh, we're looking at uh, the fallout of the May Day uh, celebration yesterday, and also we're looking at uh, Bring Back Our Girls group. Uh, what do they truly represent is what we'll be focusing on. And we have right here with us. Over here. Well, uh, let's just get a quick uh, <coughs> remark on the May Day celebrations, uh, which you're part of as a Nigerian worker. Uh, would you say <laughs> it's been awesome working for Nigeria and uh, contributing to the development of this country? And have you gotten back in return what you truly deserve? Uh, actually, if you look at the agitation of Nigerian workers as regards to the issue of uh, minimum wage, you'll agree with me that. Uh, Government has not given any categorical statement on whether they are ready to pay or not. Uh, by the time you consider the circumstances around the issue of uh, the 18,000 million they are paying, okay. you realize that many states are not even viable enough to meet up with this um, 18,000 naira. And um, for the past uh, few months now, you see that um, workers have actually been in hunger. Because the salary is not paid, we have some state that hold the workers 10 months, 14 months, and they are about. So the issue is we need to sit down and try as much as possible to look inward and find a lasting solution to this agitation of the workers. Knowing fully really well that Nigeria cannot attain any meaningful development without the productivity of its workers. And currently, Nigerian workers are terribly angry about the government about the government's insensitivity to the plight. The working condition is not there, although I, I would like to speak on the both sides of my mouth. Okay. If I criticize the government, I also need to also talk about the, the, the activities of the workers, the unproductivity of the workers. Is it all the workers or those in the private sector or uh, the workers in the government sector? You know, you know the, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are a lot of um, issues that surround okay. that. If Nigerian workers and LC to be specific is agitating for the workers of uh, improved working conditions, right. to me, they are more focused on Nigerian civil servants. Little has been said about the workers and the private right. sectors. Okay. And that is the area in which we need to look into. Like this issue of minimum wage they are agitating for now. How are we going to include the workers from the private sectors? Even the 18,000 naira, is it actually Enough. practicable? Or is it being in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in action with the private sectors? So I, I don't think so. So I want NLC to fight an exclusive war against the government. Government needs to come up with an agenda on how to take care of the private workers. I mean, the, the, the workers well, in the private sector. sector. Okay. They need to do everything possible to ensure that. Uh, they are Nigerians and they are workers, and they also need government attention. So the fact that Nigeria is not operating a guided privatization or a guided, uh, guided capitalist um, uh, system is, is not an excuse. Nigeria needs to come up. Nigeria government needs to come up and see all these workers as part and parcel of uh, Nigerian workers. And NRC too need to expand their agitation, expand the activities to embrace the workers in the private sectors. All right, uh, with what the House of uh, Representatives uh, speaker said, uh, Yakubu Dugara, that they, they are willing and ready to you know, sign the bill once it comes up, uh, does that give you some level of assurance that the federal government, uh, the National Assembly, is willing to help the Nigerian worker get a better life? I'm not expecting uh, the Speaker of the House of Representatives to come in such a direction. Knowing fully well that they are doing nothing, actually nothing, to accommodate this particular agitation from the NLC. Uh, you'll agree with me that you and me now. Okay. They've not even talked anything about the budget. And I'm surprised that it's not even making any headlines that, as at May, the budget has not been passed. What have they been doing since November when the budget proposal was submitted to the National Assembly? So they need to be held responsible for that. 
And uh, you, sh you should also understand the fact that uh, the minimum wage is not even included in the 2018 budget. Okay. Okay. So we still have a long way to go. All what we are doing now is, I see it as an preparation for 2019. So if you are expecting any miracle to commence with the implementation of the minimum wage by 2018, I think it's going to be a joke of the year. So the, for, for the speaker to be talking in such a manner, I don't know where he gets his fact from. And I don't know what actually he bases as as well now. But the fact is that the National Assembly itself is not helping matter. And they are not being very proactive to the plight of the Nigerian workers. Something very urgent needs to be done if actually they have the interest of Nigerian workers at hand. Uh, don't you think that this might, it might be, uh, you know, since we have the 2019 review, this might also be a way of, you know, okay, let's implement it, let's find a way to include this, you know, in the budget, since the budget has not even... Uh, you, 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 you talk point. about the budget, the substantive budget has not been passed. Yes. Then I will be talking about a supplementary budget. You know, it is only in this country that uh, we do things in a very frivolous manner and nobody asks questions, nobody trying to scrutinize what the problem is. The issue is, why is it not making the headlines? Why is it that Nigerian journalists are not talking about the insensitivity of the National Assembly to pass the budget? Look at the kind of drama that is coming out of the National Assembly. To me, it's just like a talk show. They are not doing anything reasonable that will make Nigerians to appreciate them. Okay? If you have not passed the substantive budget, how are we going to talk about the supplementary? And we are in May already. Very soon now, the 2018 will come to an end, and this is how they will just waste the productive year of Nigeria. So it's, it's, it's highly pathetic if it should continue in this manner. I've never seen a serious country where its parliamentary, uh, it's, it's the parliamentarians are behaving in, in, in such unparliamentary manner. Would you put the blame squarely on, on the National Assembly and leave the executive out of it? Who was the blame? The responsibility of the executive has been provided by the Nigerian Constitution is for the president to present the budget to the National Assembly to discuss and appropriate. Okay. And this has been done since November. This is May. So who is to be blamed? Who should, who, who should be blamed? Definitely the National Assembly, because they've not done their part. The Mr. President has done his part by presenting the budget as far back as November. Six months ago, or seven months, this is May. And nothing is happening. And nothing is, 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 is seen not to be happening in the next few months. Because the problem before the National Assembly now, to me, goes beyond the issue of uh, budget appropriation. They are talking about the issue of maize. Who knows maybe tomorrow is Mr. President of uh, the Mr. Senate President will be, will, be, will, be, will be kidnapped. If this maize of the National Assembly could be, I mean, could be, could be stolen in the presence of uh, senators and nobody reacted, nobody did anything to stop or prevent these guys from being but what they did. But it could have been uh, uh, okay for the senators who were in-house there to try to wrestle the maze from those uh, <laughs> hoodlums. Would that have, would he have made a better picture? Or anyway, if they valued it so much as they pretended, they yeah. would have done more than that. If they actually valued it, we've seen a situation whereby they engage in 50 golf yes, yes. in the National Assembly. So why can't they do the same if they actually appreciate the maze so much to protect it? So the issue of not wrestling the, with the with the with Good the woodlums that came to the to, 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 to steal the maze is not an issue. If they, if they, if they could wrestle with their colleagues. In the National Assembly, uh, probably. The Why wouldn't they rest? The the... going to generate income. Okay, <laughs> you are the one that says so. I'm asking. Is, is, is it that because the maze wasn't going to generate? I wouldn't know. Income? I wouldn't know. <laughs> but to me, it's not important to them. Otherwise, they will have done everything to protect it. All right. Uh, let's just uh, flip uh, uh, the coin now and look at the other side of the divide. The, the other uh, issue we wanted to talk about, talking about bringing back our girls. Um, lots of commentary have been said or views have shared, been shared about uh, bring back our girls group saying is it a political uh, association is it a pressure group or is this truly strictly for the bring back our girls or is it for obi christly to hit back into prominence and get a, a a nomination or an appointment what, what's your take about the bring back our girls group 
and have they stayed true to their course or have they deviated at any point in time? Which course do they have to pursue? To bring back our girls. Bring back our girls? Okay. Uh, I think it's very important for us to look at it from the inception of this so-called uh, organization. I see it as a um, civil society when it started on board. And uh, you and I witnessed the bring back our girls as an organization when it started. You could see that it started with a mobilization of Nigerians to pressurize the government of the day okay. to ensure that uh, those girls that were adopt, I mean, uh, kidnapped, abducted in uh, Chibok, Chibok yeah. have been Return. returned safely. That was the fundamental objective of establishing the Bring Back Our Girls. And um, when it started, many Nigerians actually subscribed to it. And um, not only that, people in diasporas, Nigerian diasporas, the foreigners, international organizations, international donors, they all sympathized with uh, Nigerian girls that were abducted. And that gave the organizers or conveners of Bring Back Our Girls the opportunity to leverage. And they pressurized the government that time. I'm talking about the immediate past government yeah. of uh, Gulag Jonathan. Uh, you also agree with me, because I want us to take it from the chronological phases of how this bring, uh, bring Back Our Girls came up. Okay. So when it started in such manner, it actually got the attention of many people from Nigerians and also Nigerians. If I got a stage in which every individual wants to be identified with uh, BBOG. However, if you look at the way and manner the BBOG operated last in the, in the 2014, that was some um, electionary year to 2015 election, you'll agree with me that uh, it was one of the centripetal and centrifugal forces that checkmated the activities of Jonathan's administration and at the same time brought to power the current administration because of all sorts of blackmailing, propaganda, and um, criticisms that were levied against the Middle past administration okay, because so of its insensitivity to the spate of insecurity in Nigeria at that time. Okay. So immediately after the election, you could see that uh, the call for bring back our girls, the activities melted down for a while. And after some times, it started again, even though the current government did everything it could to repel some of their activities. You could recall, there was a time they wanted to go to the state house, there was a time they wanted to state demonstration, and they were being stopped by the Nigerian police, police yeah. you know? So, since that time, analysts, several political pundits, started giving uh, bring back our girl different political coloration. And um, to me, it is an agitation, it's an advocacy that started on a good note. But just like any other activities, any other organization in Nigeria, they may start very well, but along the line, they will deviate. That's how it is to some of our organizations, including the civil society. Do you agree with the critics that say obviously is using the BBOG to honestly, honestly, I'm um, beginning to subscribe to such school of thought that obviously um, is trying to use this bring back our girl to leverage to get attention of the government. And when such couldn't come on time, this is the third year of the administration, and there is no hope that the Obiosecretary is going to be appointed or is going to be given any political office. So you can see the way and manner they are coming up, organizing conferences, trying to seek relevance. And unfortunately, unfortunately for them, the current administration has done so much in returning about 100 or more than 100 girls out of the 250 girls that were abducted. Okay. So if you are to assess the performance of the government in that direction, you could also agree that uh, they don't have any cause. They don't have any reason 
to criticize the government that the government is not doing anything in, bring, in, in bringing back the girls safely. So if they can return over 100 okay. girls, I think they have done relatively well and they need to be encouraged to do more so that we see all these girls being returned safely to their respective parents. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, I just I wanted, to, well, I wanted you to um, shed your, your 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 view on this angle. Now, what if um, they have they are thinking that right now? Okay, maybe calling it bring back our girls was actually a wrong move because of course it's not every time that girls will be abducted from schools and not every time that girls will be taken away and not brought back. And so, what if they decide to say, okay, let us turn it to something different, you know, away from bringing back girls, but something that can be able to still keep them relevant in the system. I don't know the kind of relevance someone would like to seek in the era of uh, insecurity. You see, this is one of the problems we have in this country. Today, one of the major reasons why conflict, spate of uh, insecurity, refuse to leave our country is because this particular situation has developed what I call conflict entrepreneurship. Everybody wants to benefit. Everybody wants to gain from the current state of insecurity in the country. Gain politically, economically, and otherwise. And that's exactly why it is very difficult for the government of the day to tackle this insecurity, simply because every individual is not thinking on how to find a lasting solution to it, but rather how to gain from it. So the moment you have such side, the moment you have such arrangement, such social construct, it will be very difficult for us to tackle or fight against insecurity. Bring back our girls. Just like as you have rightly said, is it every time the girls will be abducted? If you say bring back our girls is a civil society organization and they are projecting it in such manner with all the paraphernalia that has to do with the civil society organization, then it has come to stay. So if it has come to stay, does it mean that uh, in the nearest future they are expecting some other girls to be abducted? And if such doesn't come on board, are they going to influence or orchestrate the abduction of girls from schools so that they will make the organization to be relevant? Because that is what is actually uh, displayed to us, if actually they are sincere. So to me, bring back our girls and actually serve its purpose and it should be disbanded because it's, it's no longer relevant. The girls we are talking about are very returning to their parents. Okay, if you say cheaper girls, are you going to form another bring back a girl for dirty girls? The cheaper girls are there, the dirty girls, or are you still anticipating that some other girls are going to be abducted? So we need to be very sincere in whatever activities we are embarking upon. If you are looking for political relevance, there are so many other ways in which you can do it. You must you mustn't do everything to benefit from the from the from the from the problem of others currently insecurity in nigeria is a big challenge and if care is not taken it could consume the entire country you could see the kind of a uh, situation we find ourselves now before now the issue of kidnapping the issue of abduction the issue of uh, suicide bomber we were hearing it from far we were only read on the pages of newspaper or listening to this from from, from international news, but now it has come to us and is living with us. The issue is let all of us, because it's a collective responsibility. Security is not a responsibility of the government alone. Because it, 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 it amazes me the way some people talk. Whenever there is any, any, any attack, they would direct it to the Mr. President as if Mr. President is a spirit. That has to be in every 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 corner well, of the state. Well, he's the he's the he's the, the commander in chief. Uh, of we, course, he's the chief. To you? No, no, no. How will you direct it to me? Or the state governor? You see, he's the chief security of the country, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. That one is not debatable. Okay. But the issue is, is he the one that ordered the killing? He cannot be everywhere, and he has his own uh, service chief that is that is that is working for him. So if they have failed. Nigerian people, shouldn't we hold him responsible so that he changes those he has given the... What, I, what, I, what I'm even trying to drive okay. at is that uh, this is not the time we'll have blames. 
This is not the time well, we the point. Federal government is apportioning blame to the past administration. So why shouldn't we uh, blame to them? You see, one thing we need to understand is that uh, you know there's some assertion that comes in a very careless manner. Okay. Uh, when you are being engrossed with problems, right. there is every possibility that you misfire. Uh, to me, that statement of the Mr. President okay. of putting every blame on the past administration, yeah. it doesn't hold water. It doesn't, it, to me, it, it doesn't make sense. You are in charge today. You need to do everything possible to ensure that when the country is under your watch, you do your best to ensure security of lives and property of Nigeria. So that is what it's supposed to concentrate on. Okay. Nevertheless, what I'm trying to say is that we should not continuously criticize the president. We should not blame him for all these problems that is happening here. Because this problem didn't start today. Okay. What we're supposed to do is to support him. Well, is to ensure that... Solutions. Yes, he said it. And between you and I, okay. he's trying his best in making sure that... Um, the, 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 the insecurity in the country, uh, the I, avalanche I, I, of violence sure is he's very trying, reduced. He's trying his best. When he tells the Inspector General of Police to go to Benue and he stops in Nassau and he does he not do about punish it? him for flouting executive orders, can you say he's doing his best? Uh, you see, there are some things we need to understand. When you find yourself in this kind of a crisis, okay. every step, every statement, of the security personnel need to be appropriately scrutinized. Okay. You wouldn't know what could have transpired during that period. But the issue is, if there is any flaw of executive orders, okay. there should be penalty. Okay. And if Mr. President has not carried out the investigation on what actually happened, while his order was not being obeyed, I think he should try as much as possible to investigate it and take initial action. What I'm actually advocating for is Nigerians should be ready okay. that security is not the sole responsibility of an individual. It is a collective responsibility. These people that are tormenting Nigerians, these people that are killing the innocent Nigerians, they are within us. And something needs to be done to fill them out if they are within us, why can't we fill them out? Why can't we assist the security personnel? Why can't we do everything possible to ensure that this particular spirit of insecurity is being reduced to the barest minimum? All right, let's wrap the conversation up. Uh, uh, my final question to you will be, uh, should BBLG be scrapped? Uh, should obviously be given a stern warning to disease from our further actions? Or probably, uh, you know. I don't think so because we are in democracy, okay. Okay. and uh, in democracy there is freedom of association. Okay. In a small church, you are not doing anything inimical to the state. Okay, but you, I, you, I you wouldn't. Part of those that led to the I wouldn't stop the former administration and they bring it into. A yes, yes, yes. So I, 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 I said it. An anti rule here. No, 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 no. The issue is being inimical to the entire country. Is not, it is quite different from being antithetical to an individual. All right. And if you study the situation carefully well, in 2014, when BBOG came to the limelight, okay. it was actually an organization that pressurized the past administration. And every, everybody could witness to that. And now, another election is coming by 2019. And I can agree with you that BBOG also want to seek relevance, and they also want to do everything possible to see how they can uh, 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 agitate, whether genuinely or otherwise, to, uh, to ensure that they get attention of the government. But the issue is BBOG is no longer relevant. To me, okay. if I were to build the position to scrap the BBOG, I would have made such pronouncement that we don't need the BBOG any longer. What we, need, what we need, what we need, what we need is an association that will bring all Nigerians together, that will sensitize Nigerians
to indoctrinate Nigerians on how to be security conscious, how to allow the security personnel whenever there is any security challenge. Because the current state of insecurity in Nigeria is becoming overwhelming. It is not, and it's not a situation whereby a specific organization will say they want to champion and they, they, will, they, they, they will benefit from it. Just quickly, uh, just this morning, you broke that the president ordered for 6,000 recruit uh, officers, Nigerian police officers, to be recruited. Are you impressed? And uh, what was your take on that? It's true. If you look at the population of Nigerian police, you'll agree with me that um, if you compare it with Nigerian population, you, 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 you will conclude that we have insufficient police security officers in our country and something needs to be done to increase the population. However, it is not only to increase the population of uh, police officers, but rather to empower them with the ultra-modern sophisticated weapons to fight against the crime. If a common uh, others could carry the AK-47, I don't see any reason why the Nigerian police will not carry machine gun. So that is where yeah, I'm going okay. to uh, address the government. That it's not about recruiting more police officers. Okay. It's about providing them with necessary facilities to tackle crimes in our society. And they also need to be well funded. They need to be well funded and they need to be provided for. Their working conditions need to be improved if you actually want them to perform. I see the Nigerian police as one of the best police officers in the world if they have facilities to work. But you can see, majority of them are rotting on our highways, collecting 50-50 naira. All right, uh, on that very instructive note, uh, wrapping it up, always fun, always very, very uh, charged up whenever you have Dr. Michula in the studios. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your views on the May Day and uh, the security challenges. It's and my pleasure. BBOG. All right, uh, that's how we call it a wrap. Uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll be having a member of the BBOG in the studios to defend their own side of the bargain. And uh, this is how we call Africa's finest breakfast show, Daybreak Nigeria, on television Nigeria. A wrap. Special thanks to the entire production team, Mr. Noah, Josh, Philip. Uh, the program manager uh, intern and also Uchechi and everybody else who made this production awesome donut we're saying big thank you for making us something out all good see you tomorrow uh final words from you all right everything you do don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel television nigeria like us on facebook television nigeria and uh, follow us on twitter and of course instagram at tv in nigeria my name is cynthia agua don't forget that life is very, very sweet, so don't waste it. And you can climb the ladder of success with both hands in your pocket. You have yourself a wonderful day. Good morning. Celebrate May 1st, call for review of minimum wage. Nigerian Air Force receives helicopter gunships for internal security operations. Federal government bans importation of codeine and in sports from a man city boss to become a coach. These and more stories in a moment. I am Ntan Ekman with the AM News on Television Nigerian. As workers in Nigeria observe the annual Workers' Day, our correspondent Imabong Eduko, who is there, tells us more in her report. As Nigerians celebrate Workers' Day, the federal government has pledged commitment to enhance workers' welfare and prosperity for all citizens. A statement by the Minister of Labor, Chris Ngige, called on workers to use the occasion to ponder on the positive outcome of the struggle for better working conditions and decent work environments. He says that the federal government places premium on the welfare of workers and all citizenry and has done so in a very transparent manner. 
Workers, however, insist that the government must review the minimum national wage to address current economic challenges in the country. Because it's unfortunate that even our take home cannot take us home. That is why we are now saying, okay, why can't you have a review? And the review is not out of place. That is why we now sat down, we have all the data concerned, we have all the analysis that let us have a 66,200. On the fight against corruption, the workers say government is on the right track to reposition the public sector. The corruption is this minimum. We understand it. The other thing that the high expectation of the masses that the corruption will just be just step by step. They also criticized recent remarks credited to President Muhammad Buhari, where he described youths in the country as lazy. Well, we have reservation for the uh, future of the Nigerian worker. More so, if national leaders term the youths as lazy. But of course you can see for yourself, there's nobody that looks like a lazy man. We are hardworking people, we have responsibilities, we have families, and we are up to our responsibilities. The workers expressed hope in the future of the country, insisting that Nigerians must remain steadfast in their hope on the country. From Abuja, Imabong Edukere, TVN News. The Federal Ministry of Health has directed the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, to ban further issuance of permits for the importation of codeine as active pharmaceutical ingredient for calf preparations. Minister of Health Professor Isaac Adewoli made this known in Abuja. He said that the directive became necessary due to the gross abuse codeine usage has been subjected to in the country. The minister further said codeine containing cough syrups should be replaced with dextromethorphan, which is less addictive. He also directed the Pharmaceutical Council of Nigeria and NAFDAQ to supervise a recall for labeling and audit trailing of all codeine containing cough syrups in the country, while he has also banned sales of codeine containing cough syrup without prescription across the country. The Pharmacist Council of Nigeria has been directed to continue. challenges including the farmers headsmen
supply of the deal. American allies like the UK and France have called for the agreement to be maintained, arguing that Iran has abided by it. Steady